Domine misericordia tua. Domine exaudio rationem mea. Dominus Bobiscum, Alemus, exaudinos Domine Sancte, Pater Omnipotens, Eterne Deus, et Viteri Dignere Santo Mangelum Duum Dei Celis, Qui custodia fobia podia visite la cui defenda omnes abitantes in hoc abitaculo per Christum Dominum Nascum. Dominus 
The epistle for today, the feast of Christ the King. He is saying from the letter of the Apostle St. Paul to the Colossians. Brethren, giving thanks to God the Father, whom it is worthy to be partakers of the lot of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the remission of sin with the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for in him were all things created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominations or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and in him. And he is above all, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may hold the primacy, because in him it hath well pleased the Father that all fullness should dwell, and through him to reconcile all things unto himself, making peace through the blood of his cross, both as to the things that are on earth and the things that are in heaven, in Jesus Christ our Lord. The Holy Gospel is taken from the Gospel according to St. John. At that time, Pilate said to Jesus, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or have others told it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief of priests have delivered thee up to me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, 
My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would certainly strive that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But, my, but now my kingdom is not from hence. Pilate therefore said to him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. For this was I born, and for this came I into the world, that I should give testimony to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. First of all, a couple of announcements. You will have noticed at the back of the church, you will find some copies of the propers of this Mass and of the prayers that are to follow. Also a list of the hymns that we will sing in the procession that is going to follow Mass this morning. Being the Feast of Christ the King, then after the Mass, we're going to have the procession of the Blessed Sacrament, and we're going to go around the block, profess our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, King of Kings, truly present in the Blessed Eucharist. At the end of the procession, we'll come into the church and then we will recite the litany of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the act of consecration of the human race to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. We have here our first communicants today who have a special role to perform for that procession. They will go before the Blessed Sacrament, casting the flower petals as a sign of reverence for our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament before his way. After the procession, when we come back into the church, then the first communicants will be rolled in the brown scapula. The brown scapula is the mantle of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and it's a sign of our devotion to the Mother of God. And the Blessed Virgin Mary has promised eternal salvation and to be delivered from purgatory. For those who wear their brown scapula faithfully, it's a sign of devotion to her and love of her and pray fervently to her every day. Reminder, a couple of other announcements, that this Wednesday, the Feast of All Saints, Holy Day of Obligation in the Universal Church. So we have Mass in the morning at 8 o'clock, and there'll be Mass in the evening at 6.30 for those who have to work, so that everybody can get to Mass on All Saints Day. Thursday is All Souls Day, in which we pray for the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, and the times of the Masses are in the bulletin. This Friday is first Friday of the month, and Saturday, first Saturday, devotions in reparation of the Sacred Heart and to the Immaculate Heart of Mary take place on the first and fr Friday and the first Saturday, as are indicated in the bulletin. You'll all also have noticed at the back of the church a list which you can place the pious list, the souls of the faithful departed. We put that list on the altar and throughout, throughout the month of November, and we pray for the repose of the souls of the faithful departed throughout the month of November. We invite you to write the names of your faithful departed on that list, and you can leave it in the boxes outside the back of the church. Other announcement next Sunday, first Sunday of November, there will be a meeting of the Confraternity of the Holy Souls, which is an annual meeting which we get together, renew our prayers for the poor souls in purgatory, and the booklets for the members will be available. And that meeting, which reminds us of the importance of this devotion of charity to the poor souls, will take place after the High Mass next Sunday. I remind you also about our annual dinner and auction which will take place in two weeks' time in St. Joseph House, 12 noon after the High Mass. And so that uh, you're all invited to come to that dinner and auction. It will be a lot of fun and a fundraiser for the school as well. We have, we have quite a few auction items that we will auction off and get them very cheaply. But we're looking for more items and the cost of that dinner is... Uh, in the bulletin, the Mother's Club is arranging the meal. So that's in two weeks' time on the 12th of November. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Thou hast said that I am a king. Indeed. 
If we have this wonderful day of Christ the King, it's the opportunity for you to receive your first communions. It's because by so doing, you will acknowledge that Christ is the King of your souls. And you want him to live as a king and to rule over your hearts. You learned your catechism. And you learn from your catechism, why did God make you? And you know the answer to that question very well. You've all told me, God made me to show forth his goodness on earth and to be happy with him in heaven. And what must we do to be happy with him in heaven? You know the answer. We must know him, love him, and serve him on this earth. But how? How are we going to know, love, and serve God? We know this is our duty. Baptized Catholics, we belong to our Lord Jesus Christ. How are we going to do it? Well, that's why it is. That Jesus, the Son of God from all eternity, came down upon this earth. Why was God made man? You know that question from your catechism too. God was made man. That he might save us from our sins and take us to heaven. And how then does he save us from our sins? You know the answer to that one too. By his suffering and death upon the cross. You know all the answers. You know the answers to why then Christ God became man and died upon the cross. And that explains why it is that you want to receive your Holy Communion, your First Communion, because you want to receive God made man to take away our sins. I've asked all of you, what is the Holy Eucharist? And you've told me, you know it. The Holy Eucharist is the sacrament of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. But what does that mean? The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. What does it mean when we are going to receive Holy Communion? I ask you, every one of you, do you want to make your First Communion? And when you said yes, I said why? You have to know why. The three reasons why. Three things that we think of when we think of Holy Eucharist. First thing, it tells us of Jesus suffering and death on the cross. Because that's how it is that he can give us his body and blood. Because he offered his body and blood for us on the cross. Why do you want to receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist? You want to receive his body and blood. You want to receive then the fruit of his passion and suffering and death upon the cross by which he paid for our sins and opened the gates of heaven. You want to be like Jesus. And that's what Jesus said. If any man will come after me, let him take up his cross and follow me. And so you want to follow Jesus. You want to walk in his footsteps. But you can only walk in his footsteps if you follow his passion and cross. So you look at Jesus on the crucifix, you see how much he loves you, and you want to be like him. Holy Communion reminds you of that. It's Jesus on the cross whom you receive in your hearts. And the second thing that Holy Communion reminds you of is that Jesus comes into our hearts to give us his grace. Grace so that we can love him. You know, you've heard it, you've understood it, that the Holy Eucharist is the sacrament of love, of God's love for us, by which he gave of himself for us. And you want to love God too, as he has loved us. And that's why you want to receive Holy Communion. So you can truly love God the way that you ought to love him. And receive this goodness in your heart. You want to be good. You want to be holy. You want to be pleasing to God. But you can't do it by yourselves. None of us can. We need Jesus in our hearts. And that's why you want to receive your First Communion. And the third thing is this. You want to receive your First Communion. And some of you told me this. I want to receive my First Communion because I want to go to heaven. And that is so true. Because Jesus said, He who eats my body and drinks my blood has everlasting life. 
and I will raise him up on the last day. He promised that if we receive his body and blood lovingly and fervently, he would give us life everlasting. He already is life everlasting, and he comes in our souls to give that to us. That's what he promised us. And that's why we have the assurance that if we fervently, lovingly, frequently receive our divine Saviour in Holy Communion, that we will one day be able to go with him in heaven where he prepares a place for us. That's why it is that you want to receive your first Holy Communion so that then you can be truly devoted to our divine Saviour and be his servants. Remember the example of St. Tarsisius. St. Tarsisius was a boy, 12 years of age. It was a time of the persecution in the early church and many of the Catholics were in prison for their faith and they were going to die as martyrs. But the priests could not go and take them Holy Communion because the Roman authorities would not allow them to do so. And so, what happened? They chose a little boy. His name was Tarsisius. You take the host, the bread of everlasting life. You give it to them so that when they die as martyrs, they can go to heaven. And he went with his precious satchel and his treasure, which he clutched close to his heart on the way to the prison to find the martyrs to be. And on his way, some of his friends saw him and started making fun of him. What is it you are catching close to your heart? And he wouldn't say, we want to see, we want to see. And he wouldn't tell, he wouldn't show it to them because he remembered those words of sacred scripture, do not throw your pearls to swine. They don't understand. So he clutched hard to his heart. Then they started to, to hit him and throw stones at him and put sticks on him and they pushed him to the ground and they killed him. And he died a martyr of the Holy Eucharist. But even then, they could not get his hands open and they could not get the treasure which he preserved with his life, the Holy Eucharist. And he watched over the Holy Eucharist. And he showed his love for Jesus, body and blood in that manner. Example for us, for how we must love our divine Savior in his body and blood. Another example for us is a very simple saint, who was a Franciscan brother and who had a great love of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. His name was St. Paschal Balon. And his patron saint of the Eucharistic Crusaders, which I hope you will become. At any rate, St. Paschal Balon, when he joined the monastery, had this attraction. He was drawn every day to the altar to adore the Blessed Eucharist. Whenever he had a spare moment, he would come there and he would tell Jesus how much he loved him. He would stay there for hours, immovable, filled with love of Jesus, God made man in the Holy Eucharist. And that's what you need to do when you've made your Holy Communion to tell Jesus that you love him, to thank him for coming into your hearts. And whenever you get the chance to come to the church to adore him and to tell him you love him again because he loves us so much. And of course, it's because of the love of our divine Savior that we're here on the feast of Christ the King and we want to truly enter into his kingdom you might say that if Jesus is king then he was always king yes but he's king in the Blessed Eucharist in a special manner you know from your catechism where is God oh God is everywhere you know that God is everywhere but God is present in a very special way in the Holy Eucharist, in a different way than the way he's present everywhere because it's his body and blood, his soul and divinity. It's, it's him himself who is present, God made man. And that's why we come and love and adore him. And he wants to rule over us and to be our king in a special way in the Holy Eucharist. You know, he was king from all eternity in heaven because God is king. He rules all things. He's omnipotent and he's all-powerful. He didn't have to come on this earth to be king, to be judge of the world that he is. 
they came onto this earth to be a king in a special way. And what's his kingdom that he came on this earth to bring about? It's interesting to note that during his whole life, Jesus would not allow anybody to make or call him king. In fact, when they tried to do it, he ran away and prayed on the mountain alone, except for Holy Week, Palm Sunday. He allowed them to declare he's the king of the Jews. And on Good Friday, he declared he was a king. And he told Pontius Pilate, yes, I'm a king. For that did I come into the world that I might bear witness to the truth. They who hear the truth follow me. They're my kingdom. This kingdom is a kingdom not of this world. And he had said that if my kingdom were of this world, my disciples would fight for it with physical arms. In fact, that's what he said. In the Garden of Gethsemane, when it was that St. Peter pulled out a sword to defend him, and he said to St. Peter, put your sword back into the scabbard. Those who fight by the sword perish by the sword. Do not I have twelve legions of angels who can come and defend me? Am I not to bring drink the chalice which my Father has given to me to drink? The chalice of his passion. Yes, he became a king by dying on the cross. And that's why on Good Friday he allows himself to be proclaimed as king. And this king is not a kingdom of power and money on this earth. What kind of a kingdom is it? It's a kingdom of mercy. He came to save souls. He came to save sinners. And it's the mercy he longs to give to souls. He wants to rule over our souls. He wants our souls to be his. It's a kingdom of love. The love which he showed by giving himself up for us and sacrificing himself totally on the cross, not holding back anything. And so likewise, he wants us to love him and to give ourselves to him, not holding back anything, the same way as he loved us. He wants then to rule over us, to rule over our minds when we submit and accept the truth of the faith and all the truth about God and live our lives according to the truth who is God and the commandments of God and the commandments of the church which we love to keep because this is the truth, this is how we get to heaven. He rules over our wills when we love to do God's will and when we embrace our cross. He rules over our hearts when we long to be united with Jesus, one with him. That's the rule of mercy and the rule of love that he wants to accomplish in our souls. When we follow our divine Saviour in this procession of the Blessed Sacrament, we follow him, the King of love. We follow him, his body and blood, in the Holy Eucharist, offered on the cross. We proclaim that he's king on the cross. He rules from the cross. He rules over souls. And we want him to rule over all souls. Our souls to start with, because we want to love him and serve him and honour him and belong to him and do his holy will and the souls of all others that we want to come into his kingdom and go to heaven too. That's why it is we go out and sing in honour of Christ the King following Jesus in the Blessed Eucharist because there he is, as he was on the cross, longing to rule over us by his love. And so we follow him. And there's something too that we must do also that he might be king over our hearts. Children, you remember in your catechism book there is a picture and there's a picture of the Mass and a part of the Mass which is called the offertory. And there you see the little children offering their hearts to Jesus. Well, that's what we do when we receive Holy Communion. We offer ourselves and our hearts to Jesus. Yes, he wants to come into our hearts and dwell there, but under the condition that we give ourselves to him. He gives himself to us, 
if we give ourselves to Him. That's why it is, children, that you make your morning offering every day. You give yourselves to the sacred heart of Jesus. So when you come to Mass and receive your communion, you don't just kneel there and ask for grace. You kneel there, you give yourself to Jesus so that he can give himself to us. You see, it works both ways. That's what love is. Love is giving, for it's better to give than to receive. And if we give ourselves to God, made man, to Jesus, then he gives himself to us. If we give him our minds, our wills, our hearts, our desires, everything is his, then he gives himself to us and we are exchanging one with another. We are loving one another. We are sharing that divine love which he wants to give to us. And that's what Holy Communion is really all about. And that's the love that makes our lives on this earth truly joyful and worthwhile and able to attain their goal, to be happy with Jesus in heaven. We must learn to love him on this earth, to give ourselves to him, that he can give himself to us in Holy Communion. So as much as we give ourselves, so much more we will receive grace in turn from our Holy Communion. And let's remember that every day as we say our prayers. And remember that this divine victim for our souls is going to rule over us. And so, we're going to, on this feast of Christ the King, pray that he, who is the eternal high priest, who is the king of all things, might truly rule over us, offering himself, as the preface of the Mass says, as a, an immaculate victim and peace offering for us, that he might obtain for us, that we might be a part of his kingdom, universal and eternal, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of grace and holiness, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, Amen.
miseriato vesti a potenza e usi di misi spiegati se si produca costa le dita mei teonati e lo gente ama soluzione e le misi ne peccatolo che sto un tipo a pobre son di potenza e misericordia Ecce agno sei, ecce qui tende il peccato mondi, domini non sono dito, sorriso e se te tu me, se tanto di grado e se n'abito anima me, domini non sono dito, sorriso e se te tu me, se tanto di grado e se n'abito anima me, domini non sono dito, sorriso e se te tu me, se tanto di verbo e se non mi sono animato.
proprio quando non si è servizi, di quello che non si è vittime, proprio quando non si è servizi, di quello che non si è vittime, proprio quando non si è servizi, di quello che non si è vittime, proprio quando non si è servizi, di quello che non si è vittime, proprio quando non si è servizi, di quello che non si è vittime, proprio quando non si è servizi, di quello che non si è vittime, Dopo che non mi si è servizi, di quello che non mi si è servizi, dopo che non mi si è servizi, di quello che non mi si è servizi, dopo che non mi si è servizi, di quello che non mi si è servizi, dopo che non mi si è servizi, di quello che non mi si è servizi, dopo che non mi si è servizi, di quello che non mi si è servizi, dopo che non mi si è servizi, di quello che non mi si è servizi, Dopo che non mi si è servizi, di quello che non mi si è servizi, Dopo che non mi si è servizi, di quello che non mi si è servizi, Dopo che non mi si è servizi, di quello che non mi si è servizi, Dopo che non mi si è servizi, di quello che non mi si è servizi, Dopo che non mi si è servizi, di quello che non mi si è servizi, Dopo che non mi si è servizi, di quello che non mi si è servizi, Dopo che non mi si è servizi, di quello che non mi si è servizi, Dopo che non mi si è servizi, di quello che non mi si è servizi, Dopo che non mi si è servizi, di quello che non mi si è servizi, Dopo che non mi si è servizi, di quello che non mi si è servizi, Dopo che non mi si è servizi, di quello che non mi si è servizi, Dopo che non mi si è servizi,
Litany of the Sacred Heart of Jesus is on page four of the Benedictine Hymnal. Lord have mercy on us, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy on us, Christ hear us. God the Father of Heaven, 
God the Son, Redeemer of the world. God the Holy Ghost. Holy Trinity, one God. Out of Jesus, Son of the Eternal Father. Out of Jesus, formed by the Holy Ghost in the womb of the Virgin Mother. Out of Jesus, substantially united to the Word of God. Heart of Jesus of infinite majesty. Heart of Jesus, holy temple of God. Heart of Jesus, tabernacle of the Most High. Heart of Jesus, house of God and gate of heaven. Heart of Jesus, blowing furnace of charity. Heart of Jesus, abode of justice and love. Heart of Jesus, full of goodness and love. Heart of Jesus, the best of all virtues. Heart of Jesus, most worthy of all praise. Heart of Jesus, King and Savior of all hearts. Heart of Jesus, wherein are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Heart of Jesus, wherein dwells the fullness of the Godhead. Heart of Jesus, in whom the Father is well pleased. Heart of Jesus, of whose fullness we have all received. Heart of Jesus, desire of the everlasting hills. Heart of Jesus, patient and full of mercy. Heart of Jesus, reach and a hollow call upon thee. Heart of Jesus, source of life and holiness. Heart of Jesus, a propitiation for our sins. Heart of Jesus, saturated with reproaches. Heart of Jesus, bruised for our sins. Heart of Jesus, obedient even unto death. Heart of Jesus, pierced with the lands. Heart of Jesus, source of all consolation. Heart of Jesus, our life and our resurrection. Heart of Jesus, our peace and reconciliation. Heart of Jesus, victim for sin. Heart of Jesus, Jesus, salvation of those who hope in Thee. Heart of Jesus, hope of those who die in Thee. Heart of Jesus, the light of all the saints. Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world. Jesus, meek and humble of heart. Let us pray, Almighty and eternal God. Look upon the heart of thy dearly beloved Son, and upon the praise and satisfaction which he rendered thee in the name of sinners. For me, thus a peace to thou grant pardon to those who seek thy mercy. In the name of the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, who liveth and reigneth with thee forever and ever. Amen. The act of consecration of the human race to the sacred heart of Jesus is found on page 4 of the Benediction Handbook. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Most sweet Jesus, Redeemer of the human race, look down upon us, humbly prostrate before thy altar. We are thine and thine we wish to be, but to be more surely united to thee, to hold each one of us freely consecrates himself today to thy most sacred heart. Many indeed have never known thee. Many too, despite thy precepts, have rejected thee. Have mercy on them all. Most merciful Jesus, draw them to thy sacred heart. Be thou King or Lord, not only of the faithful who have never forsaken thee, but also of the prodigal children who have abandoned thee. Grant that they may quickly return to their father's house. Lest they die of hunger and hunger. Be thou king of those who are deceived by the his or whom discord keeps aloof, and call them back to the harbor of truth, 
and unity of faith, so that soon there may be but one flock and one shepherd. Be thou king of all those who are still involved in the darkness of idolatry and Islamism, and refuse not the light and kingdom of God. Turn thine eyes of mercy toward the children of that race, once thy chosen people, of all they called down upon themselves, the blood of the Saviour, may now descend upon them, a labor of redemption and of life. Grant, O Lord, to thy church assurance of freedom and immunity from harm. Give peace and order to all nations. Make the earth resound from pole to pole with one cry. Pray to the divine heart that brought our salvation. To it be glory and honor forever. Amen. <coughs> Number 108. <laughs>
Aves Sacramento Mirabile Passine Tui Memorri Avere Cristi Trevo e quez nos che de nos copre se sanguine sue sacre misteri a venerare. Oleremo se ne sue frutti me nove giudici de sensi amos. Qui vivi se regna sin secola secolo. Divine praises in reparation for blasphemy. Blessed be God. Blessed be, be His holy name. Blessed be, be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be, be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Ghost, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, our most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints.
parte, se ti e spiriti, 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 se ti e spiri